Um, go ahead and sit down here. When I first opened this shop, there wasn't nearly as much crap in here. So we had this whole like area dedicated to taking photos. I bought the backdrop and everything. Um, nowadays, we don't have that anymore. So I normally don't have any of this stuff out anymore. I put it away, but it's somewhere in the shop. And I'm gonna try to use two lights. I'm gonna try to use that as like, just like a key light to make the background as white as possible. And then we use this, um, collapsible beauty dish actually get a picture of the haircut um, actually just sit like that that's fine honestly it's kind of weird at first to ask customers to take pictures of their hair I got over it pretty quick as soon as I started to get some decent photos and then it became fun and also barbers and hairstylists are masters of like totally ignoring personal space so I didn't have the hang up of like I can't touch the guy especially because I've been combing through his hair for an hour um, we did use a, a shiny product in his hair which normally if i'm going to take pictures for a while I, remember I was watching this one guy um, and how he shot pictures he actually recommended using dry products because they're easier to like mess around with the hair and everything where some of the like like a real like greasy pomade or a water-based pomade it can be a little tougher to do that once it tries but it is what it is and i just wanted to real quick take a couple of pictures um one other thing i'm gonna do is just put a little talc on this and just get his um you know he's got a little bit of shine on his face or anything like that or if there's little hairs they will save you a lot of trouble later when you're just trying to yeah. maybe yeah. edit the photo a little bit. If he's got a bunch of hair all over his face or inside his ear. I'm totally guilty of that. I'm more aware of it nowadays, but okay. And where's my comb? This is the time of day where I start misplacing yeah. things. So with this haircut, because it's more of a classic look, I just, it's not a a lived-in kind of haircut. The, the combing, everything's real intentional, it's real polished. I just want to make sure that every hair is right where I want it to be. And now the pomade's getting a little stiffer, which is actually making it easier to, to make sure it's the style I want. Okay, so I'm just gonna have him keep sitting like that. Um, where did my camera go? That's right here. I got the remote for the lights. And earlier today, because it had been a while since I shot anything, I, I made sure that all my settings were in the general, you know, roundabout where I want to shoot. So that way I'm not doing it the last second. That's why I would practice doing this on my days off. Step back a little bit. Okay, yeah, just look that way, perfect. It's actually not bad right off the rip. That's pretty well exposed. I might actually just turn this up a little. But it's because I planned. And then, of course, here on the floor, there's a couple of pieces of tape. Um, I normally don't use two lights. If I can, <laughs> that's not a good picture. Um, normally I can get it done with one light or, you know, if I want to just take a picture of something real quick behind the chair and then just crank my ISO a little higher. Um, but so I'm just trying to show you guys some more stuff. We'll use the two lights. Again, I'm still getting used to using this mirrorless camera. It's weird. Um, I used a D750 DSLR for a long time and you have to shoot and look and shoot and look. Or, the mirrorless, you don't have to do that at all, but there is a bit of a learning curve. When I got the mirrorless, I decided, because there's a lot of great mirrorless cameras now, I decided to just stick with Nikon because really the big difference is just, you know, their operating system. So being that I know how to use this and I've been using it for years, it just felt like, okay, you know, I don't hate 
the camera company. I like what they're doing, so I'll just stick with what I know. That's all it was. Most of the people I know shoot Canon. That's fine. I don't have any experience with them. Okay. Um, why don't you turn this way? And this stool is cool because it just swivels, so you can just turn. Yeah, see, that looks really nice. Sometimes when I'm taking a picture of somebody, I don't know what I want necessarily. So I'll take a bunch of pictures and then just like see what, which one I like the most. You know, I do try to edit so that it looks good. Actually, I'm gonna move this because we're on the other side of his head now. Sometimes, I mean, I don't know. I might, I don't know if I'm different about it. Obviously, because of what you're, what I'm doing, you want to showcase this haircut, right? So you want to show, you know, maybe if you did an awesome fade or you know some kind of cool long trim or how it's styled. Um, that's important, but. It's also cool if you can find somebody who has a little bit of a character about themselves. Maybe it's something they're wearing. Um, I've actually, you know, if you look through some of my stuff, I've taken pictures and told the guys, like there's one with a guy wearing a suit. I told him to wear that suit. I was looking to kind of set a mood for that photo. And that came with some experience later. At first I was like, I just want to take a good picture of a haircut. And then once you get comfortable doing that, you can, do some things to make your work stand out a little bit more. Um, some guys only shoot black and white pictures. That's cool. I've done some black and white stuff. Um, I wanted to, sorry, there's a little hair there. I wanted to shoot color and then just manipulate the color to set the mood. Cause I was watching, um, bought a creative live class about that where they showed us, uh, this lady was showing different ways that she used color to like change the mood of the whole photo. Like she might put in some darker colors or some blues and it could make it look kind of cold and dreary or she can warm it up with different colors. It depends on what you're trying to get. Some people just naturally um, photograph real well. When I was doing haircuts, um, turn a little more, yeah, like that. When I would do haircuts for free on guys, I had one kid who was really photogenic, just looked really great in photos. Same kid who did the, uh, the pictures in the suit. Um, some people just naturally photograph well. Um, turn a little bit, yeah, I like that. And some of that just after a while when you start taking pictures, you just start to notice things like that. You're like, I bet that guy with that haircut and his whole get up that he has on, it could be really cool and interesting. Because sometimes, <laughs> Maybe the haircut's not that interesting, but the person is, and that's what draws people's attention to it. Which is weird to think about because I'm a barber, I'm just trying to, to show, hey, I can do good haircuts or whatever. But that's when I started to really dabble more into like, what is a photographer trying to look at? Because photographers don't give a shit about what somebody's hair looks like necessarily, unless it's a shoot for hair. Um, and then I just started to look at guys who just take cool pictures. Um, there's one guy who does tin type photography that I follow on Instagram. Who um, It's just the people he takes pictures of just look really cool and interesting. So what I was trying to do is try to find some kind of marriage of both because that makes my work more interesting. There's a lot of people that have that haircut you see it a hundred times, it's not necessarily interesting anymore. But if there's something about the person themselves that make you want to look at it, does that make sense? Okay. I'm good. Anything else? No, that's good, man. Thanks. I don't yeah. remember anything I said, so. <laughs> Hopefully some of it was okay. <laughs>